Coming up today, I was right, mainstream media was wrong. Donald Trump reclaims the White House in a historic comeback. All the big moves we're getting across market, the reactions from across the world. I look at my Trump trade and why now is a great time in the markets. We're gonna make a lot of money, guys. Let's enjoy this. Good evening, good morning, or good afternoon from wherever you are in the world. Joining me here today, thanks very much for tuning in, and what a great day it is to be a stock market bull. The roaring 20s are well and alive, and the future is looking bright. At least that's what the stock market thinks. In fact, the Dow Jones Industrial just put in its biggest post-election advance since 1896, with heaps of other big moves happening in the market that I'm going to show you guys now, thanks to the Trump victory. S&P 500 now trading at an all-time high, 59.29, almost getting up to the 6,000 mark for the first time ever. What really stole the show? today, Russell 2000, small cap stocks, ripping up here, and they too, almost reclaiming brand new all-time highs. Got a massive crush in the VIX index, volatility being sucked out of this market, with the VIX back down to 16, and there's a look at the man's stock, DJT. And stick with me today, because I'll share with you a bit of a swing trade I took overnight in DJT, and I'll show you the trades within my brokerage account and how much money I managed to make off it. But we've got some big moves happening across a lot of markets out there today. Bond yields ripping up, 10 year, 442. A monster move in the US dollar, really catching a strong bid there today on volume. Media saying this is all due to the expectations of inflation coming back. However, I think there's a bit more to it than just that. Stick with me. We'll come back to that a bit later on. Because if the market was really worried about inflation, we shouldn't have seen such a sharp fall in gold today, along with silver losing its 50-day average. However, the dollar didn't affect Bitcoin. It too ripping up to a brand new all-time high, above $73,500 on huge volume here. Also seeing plenty of action across the crypto space. Elon Musk's favorite, Dogecoin, putting in a monster day as well. Largest crypto exchange in the state's Coinbase, ripping up 31% today. And the dollar was strong across the board. There's dollar yen, 154. The euro having quite a big sharp reversal as well against the dollar. Same with the Chinese yuan and Chinese securities in general pulling back here today. And of course, what caught a monster bid, possibly Donald Trump's biggest supporter and helped to really give an edge to his campaign. Elon Musk's Tesla up almost 15% today, now approaching $300 a share. Also rocketing up on massive volume, regional banks on the view that the Trump White House is going to enact massive deregulation, loosen up conditions for business businesses, and there should be some more economic activity, availability of credit, lending. This is a boost for small businesses and American companies, and the market certainly voted with their dollars today. Regional banks up 13.5%, but it wasn't just the small banks either. Some of the largest banks on Wall Street caught a monster bid today. JP Morgan, brand new all-time highs, 11.5%. Bank of America, 8.4%, and a number of other financials showing double-digit gains today, along with other ETFs. I'd been sharing with you guys over the last month and a half, the American Industrial Renaissance ETF up almost 8% today. US Infrastructure ETF, PAVE up 6.7% today. Industrial Machinery, Caterpillar. 8.7%. Even the transports had a good day. Union Pacific, 6.2%. And some of the best performing stocks today, which I'd previously shared with you guys a few weeks ago, the prison stocks. They're a bit late to catch a bid. However, like I thought back here, they could really run into a Trump presidency. Geo Group, up 42% today. Core Civic, 29% on the back of good earnings as well. Another big move from metals and mining ETF, up 8%. And this should be a strong tailwind for the fossil fuel industry. Oil services, up almost 9% today. Along with some of those other fracking stocks I shared with you guys. Pro Petro, ticker symbol pump, up 16%. And some of the more traditional refiners as well, bouncing nicely off these technically oversold levels. I alerted you guys too over the last couple of days. Philip 66, up 5% today. And another good day for Marathon Petroleum as well, continuing to bounce off these support levels here. And surprisingly, mega cap tech also had a good day. Nvidia breaking out, brand new all time high, $145 a share and is now officially taken over Apple and is the number one largest company in the world. And another great day for Palantir shareholders, up 8.6% after yesterday's monster 23% move on the back of really good earnings and an increased outlook from them. However, not every stock did well today. Stocks vulnerable to Trump tariffs coming from China, affecting quite a few retail stocks out there today. Target down a bit, same with Best Buy, although it looks like the dip was bought there. Although Walmart pretty much traded flat, seems to be holding on to these recent gains, but there's others more vulnerable like Dollar Tree, down 6.5% today. And also interesting to see a bit of a bounce back in the nuclear uranium trade. There's New Scale, SMR, putting in a good day. 
and even Talent Energy that was knocked really lower on Monday on the news. The government had blocked their deal with Amazon, but investors bought the dip right off the bat and were actually traded right back to highs. And also not doing good, the clean energy sector, obviously, with solar stocks getting hit the hardest, TAN down 10.8%, and other utilities got hit today. Next Era Energy down 5.2%. However, it did look like the dip was bought there. Not doing so well either. Wind Resorts. And now we're getting RFK on the Trump team. He's looking to shake up and disrupt the health industry in America, which is certainly ripe for disruption. Seeing a big pullback in some of these health stocks, pharmaceuticals. Eli Lilly down 3.6% today. No surprise the China trade didn't do well today. However, it held up a bit better than what I expected. Only down 2.9%, which is not really a big move, especially of late for China. Seeming to hold there, but we still haven't heard big stimulus plans from them yet. They could be cooking up something as we speak, as Trump has threatened up to 60% in tariffs on Chinese imports, really putting them in a spot here. And he's also going to crack down on Chinese companies operating out of Mexico, trying to bypass tariffs, in which Mexico stocks initially sold off really hard. First thing off the open but caught a bid and actually finished the day a little bit higher. It was a bit surprising to me to see South Korea shares getting knocked off pretty hard here today, 2.8%. However, this could be a bit of a buy the dip opportunity at this support zone as it looks like the market may have done that as they could be one of the beneficiary countries if there's going to be big tariffs from China. A lot of US companies may look to import from other countries like South Korea. So this is definitely an interesting one. And stick with me later today because after I show you the Trump trade, I'll also share with you one beaten down sector I think could potentially be setting up for a contrarian and play that I may buy the dip on over the coming days. However, let's just start with the big event itself and I'll give you a bit of my political analysis and perspective on it as we all know the results now. Trump came through with an easy win just as I had forecast for you guys over the last couple of weeks. Pretty much everything I said came true. I thought he'd easily win and get more than the 304 votes that he did against Clinton, which he looks set to do since we're still waiting on Arizona. They've got 11 votes. They've counted 61%. Trump's well out in front at almost 52% versus Harris 47 and Nevada. They've counted 85% of the votes. He's well out in front there as well. About a five-point lead. Six electoral votes with Arizona's 11. That's 17. That'll take him up to 312. He also comfortably won the popular vote, something he didn't do in 2016. Over 72 million Americans voted for him. And he flipped some blue states from 2020 as well. As we can see here, that blue wall, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. He also picked up Georgia, and Arizona, and Nevada as well. And it looks like Republicans have got control of the Senate. We're still waiting on the lower house. Might take a few more days. This could be a total red sweep across all three levels of government. And apologies, I couldn't do a show yesterday. I was going to call the election early. However, I didn't want to do so in case we got a repeat of 2020, as I was following an eerily similar path. But Trump was well out in front for most of the night before they stopped counting. And what spooked a lot of us online in the heat of the moment was a post from Barack Obama himself during the voting process, in which he said, it's very likely we won't know the outcome tonight either, in which a lot of people were speculating could be on the verge of another potential rug pull, which luckily didn't happen. And markets were also moving like crazy and I was a little busy trading them. Like I said, I'll share with you my Trump trade later on. I think you'll find that interesting. But interesting fact, Donald Trump is only the second US president that's going to serve two non-consecutive terms and also the first US president to be convicted of felony. Over half of all voting Americans have chosen a convicted felon to lead them for the next four years. And that just goes to show how much they think about all that BS and the mainstream media, which has clearly lost its grip over the public narrative. So you got to give it to him. He ran a hell of a campaign. They tried everything on him. Try to lock him up on bogus charges, try to shut down his businesses, try to remove him from the ballot, try to kill him twice. And this is one of the greatest political comebacks, underdog stories for the history books, as Americans have clearly spoken and made it clear who they prefer to lead them. And we can especially see that shift in this map here, the difference between 2020 to 2024, how much people, especially rural Americans, even in the suburbs as well, flipped from left to right this time. So clearly his message is encapsulating many more Americans, even compared to 2016. And it was obvious the mainstream media was getting desperate when they stooped down to a new low by comparing him with Hitler. Again, most Americans didn't fall for all that BS. And so your host, Jared from Click Capital, just some suburban guy from the South Island of New Zealand, was able to call this election a lot more accurately than NBC, ABC, The Economist, New York Times, CNN, and all the other mainstream media company. You have teams of people, all their data models, the polls are clearly wrong. That's why a lot of you guys prefer to come and get your news from independent sources like Click Capital. And I gotta admit, it's really interesting to see the popular vote for Democrats coming at very similar levels, 2016, 2012. Nothing quite like the 81 million votes Biden apparently got back in 2020. But one thing's for sure, this has shown a spotlight on mainstream media and what a lot of people really think of them now as they weren't able to brainwash the majority of the country. Not only has mainstream media lost a lot of their influence, so has Hollywood. Most of Hollywood elites come out in favor of Harris. Again, America 
Americans just ignored them and just proven how irrelevant they've actually become nowadays and their sway over society. But we should have known it was a dead giveaway when the man who never misses, Jim Cramer himself, started backing Camilla Harris and somehow managed to say the market was pointing to her victory. How wrong can he get? Like I always say, follow the money. Even though all the polls, mainstream media were feeding us a bunch of other BS, if you looked at the betting markets, they nailed it earlier than anybody else, including one French trader who banked big time on it, $47 million. But I think what really gave Trump a bit of an advantage is getting the richest man in the world on his side, also the owner of one of the most popular social media platforms, Elon Musk and X. As Biden never acknowledged him, didn't even want to mention Tesla, didn't invite Tesla or Elon to the electric vehicle summit back in 2021. And in fact, even some Democratic politicians actively came after him, in which he's taken some of them to court. And the thing you got to realize with Elon, when he goes all in on something, he rarely loses. He gave Trump and his team a huge advantage, in my opinion. And like he says, we're the media now. As he was worried they were going to shut down X, potentially lock him up for, quote, misinformation, unquote. In other words, the truth. So now free speech is going to flourish. And this has played a big role in the election as it's allowed actual facts and data to be widespread and which was otherwise suffocated prior to him owning the platform. So the Mark Cubans of the world are an incredible amount of pain at the moment. Their worst nightmare. He was going around mainstream media all day telling people not to vote for Trump. Once again, most Americans don't care about guys like this. Woke elitist hypocrites. Who's actually a one trick pony. He was just lucky enough to be in the right place at the right time. In the tech bubble in the 90s, he had broadcast.com, was hyped up to the moon, didn't make any money, but was able to sell it to Yahoo for over $5 billion, in which it's said to be one of the worst corporate acquisitions in history. He hasn't even managed to grow his wealth. Much more than that would have done better in the S&P 500. Sits there all day trashing Elon Musk and Trump while Musk is trying to advance humanity, flying rockets into space. This guy's looking for the next ShamWow on Shark Tank, in which he's even admitted himself that after all these years, he's actually taken a net loss. What an idiot. But anyway, that's how it goes. Just unfortunate. Some people have more energy in their hate for Trump than they do and love for their country. But we're going to get some big changes now with RFK. There's going to be a whirlwind in American healthcare. Shake up things, try and get their quality of American food up to international developed standards and stop incentivizing industry, keep people fat and sick. Department of Justice has also come out, said they're going to stop their pursuit of Trump and we're getting a big change of tunes from a lot of federal agencies and companies. However, I'm wondering what stories they're going to come up with this time. Last time we had the Russian hoax, the dossier, all of which was proven wrong actually turned out to be Hunter Biden that's got all the dodgy overseas relationships. So I think this time maybe they'll come after his stock, but we should still expect a lot of manufactured controversies from the mainstream media. As like I said, their hate for Trump is greater than their love for their country. But anyway, that's all my political analysis and opinion. Obviously not everybody's going to agree with everything I said. And to all the trolls, well, you guys were wrong. I've had a lot of trolls I had to block that'll tell me why do I talk about politics when it has no effect on the market. Well, I wonder what they think today if politics has an effect on financial markets. Because financial markets are clearly excited by how events have unfolded and remember their future looking pricing mechanism and that's why the real winner has been the stock market and we've even got the likes of goldman sachs saying stocks should continue rallying into the end of the year as we may be on the precipice of another major economic boom in america fueled by deregulation american first policies spending money at home potentially lower corporate tax rates boosting domestic companies and now potentially the most qualified and skilled team to lead the country which could potentially unlock america's best days yet really dominate the industry of now and the future, which they'll need to in order to compete with China, because China is quickly catching up with America. We can see that in their huge acceleration of patents and their big push into future technologies as well. They're getting big into AI, clean energy, nuclear, biotech, you name it. If America's economic growth falls below 3%, 2.5% and stays there for a while, China just has to keep growing at 5%. And within five, seven, eight years, they will have overtaken America's economy and potentially have more international influence and potentially more military influence and power as well. That is unless America can take away China's advantages and keep growing their economy at a healthy 3% or above. Who knows, US GDP could clock in 4% or more over the next couple of years. And I think that's why we're seeing a big repricing in the dollar and bond yields. In addition to potentially the rise of inflation as well, which is caused by a lot of things, past and present. And so we'll get to hear a bit about that from Jay Powell tomorrow when the Federal Reserve meets to decide the interest rate. Market still pretty much guaranteeing that we get a 25 basis point cut that will be more paying attention to Jay Powell's language. Maybe talking about inflation, the tariffs, Trump's changes to immigration they're saying could be inflationary as he's looking to deport millions of illegals that could deplete the workforce, which could be inflationary. However, a country's strategy shouldn't rely on importing millions of illegal immigrants in 
in order to keep inflation down. Like he says, if you don't have a border, you don't have a country. And so we got all these spooks and fears by the media last time. Didn't really materialize as they had forecast. And like I've just showed all you guys on the charts, financial markets are pricing in good times ahead. But we should expect to see tariffs, which could definitely cause some short-term volatility, affect some other industries more than others. Companies that rely on importing goods from China and Mexico, we're already seeing a re-globalization. Companies diversifying their supply chains out of China. That's why I think other countries like South Korea, Brazil, Indonesia, Philippines, and others with low labor costs could be beneficiaries. We'll be keeping an eye on them. But the world has started going in a different path. I'd say European leaders are a little worried on both trade and military ties. They're already jumping to praise Trump. They could potentially be caught up in some economic trade wars as well. I've heard China come out and say it's hoping for a peaceful coexistence. That's always been Xi Jinping's position and stance. He's looking to work and get along with Trump and the Americans. Doesn't want a war with them. So that's still going to play out over the coming months and years. And of course, NATO and Trump's position on Ukraine and Russia is going to be a bit changing as well. As their long-time strategy has been relying on the generosity and good hearts of the Americans to foot the majority of the bill. However, Trump has argued to only pay his fair share and prefers to get along with world leaders if he can. We're already getting reports that Putin says Russia is ready to begin peace talks with Ukraine and he's happy for Trump to broker that deal and start negotiations. So we could potentially see an end to the war in Russia and Ukraine in the coming months. However, like with Israel and Iran, it is a complex situation and may take a bit of time. However, if you want to know what really gave it away to me and why I was so confident that Trump was going to win, it's quite a few things. But like I showed you guys over the last couple of months, the big difference in consumer confidence in the states in Biden's years versus Trump's years. And what makes this survey interesting is it's not a political survey. They ask consumers how they view their own financial situation, prospects for the general economy, and their forecast for the economy. So you could think of the consumer confidence survey as how Americans are feeling. You can see back here in the GFC global financial crisis. They weren't feeling so great, obviously. It took a few years to bounce back. Trump got in up here. Americans were feeling the best they had done in years. And of course, we got COVID. In came Biden. Record government spending. Huge amount of inflation. Record illegal immigrants. Geopolitical tensions, the worst we've ever seen. And Americans didn't know they were filling out a political survey, but they were. Most people, not just the top 1% or top 10% mainstream media, big city people or whatever. Most hardworking Americans feeling the pinch from inflation and don't like seeing their cities flooded with legal immigrants. So it was obvious to me that Americans were going to flip. And that's why I was confident to go against the mainstream media and all those polls. And in addition to my portfolios, all rocketing up to all time highs, having a great day today and yesterday. I was also able to turn my view into a little bit of profit as well on Trump stock. Like I said earlier, this video I'd share with you guys a little swing trade I took last night after the market closed on DJT, which I thought you guys might find interesting. So I thought I'd share with you my logic logic and reasoning behind it. Now, as you guys know, I'm mostly an active investor and also do some swing trading where the trades last on average a couple of weeks. I don't normally day trade or trade overnight. However, this was a unique event and this trade just jumped at me off the screen. And so I thought I'd have a little fun and do a bit of an overnight swing trade, of course, with funds that I can afford to lose. So I was watching DJT after the market closed and we're trading down really softly post market here on low volume, coming back down to this low we made in regular trading in the afternoon, which we got some bullish signals. Market appeared to hold there and accumulate. So I bought 300 shares at 33.48 at 4.32 New York time. And then we kept dipping a little lower. I could see my reversal signal starting to fire off. It was on low volume. Didn't think it was going to hold. So I added another 100 shares at 32.10 right around here. And we can see that in this buy here, 4.46, 32.10. So I had 400 shares. And since I'm in New Zealand, I can't watch it all night. So I set some resting limit orders from 39.50 all the way up into the mid 60s as I was just using prior resistance zones to set some resting limit orders. 50 shares of pop, eight different orders, all the way up, like I said, into the 60s, where it traded back in March. So just going back down to the five minute chart again, and here we are post market. As results were just starting to come in, we popped up, got a lot of volatility, and then we started getting more and more results. And another thing that gave me confidence back here was the prediction betting markets were still showing him a 60% chance of winning. So I was wondering whether something had come out that I couldn't see yet, but I looked at the prediction markets which are heavily traded and respond minute by minute, and they were still holding up. So that gave me confidence to pull the trigger and get long 400 shares. I had my first resting limit sell order at 39.50, which got filled in the post-market session. So it runs from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. New York time. And we can see that filled at 7.26 New York time. And then before the post-market closed, I got another fill at 43.50, and then it dipped down right into post-market close as the market had to discount that dark period from 8 p.m. to 4 a.m. And this is when rumors were online that we may be heading in the same path as 2020. 
20. However, I held strong on my 300 remaining shares and we did a massive gap up in pre-market session, 4 a.m. New York time. And you can see we actually opened at 44.71 and it shot right up to almost $55 a share. And just to show you how volatile it was back then, I had three resting sell orders, one for $47 because I thought, why not? Trump's going to be the 47th president. That got filled at 48.74 at 4 a.m. soon as pre-market opened. And literally at the same time, my 53.50 limit order filled, which was up around here. And I also had another order for 48.50, which got filled the same as the first order as well. So it shot up right as pre-market opened to $55. However, that was the high for pre-market. We pretty much just traded flat. The whole pre-market actually opened around $44. Like I said, we shot up to almost 55 pre-market. We're up around here. However, I thought we were going to potentially shoot up into the 60 if he won. My theory was he could trade back to those former highs. So I wasn't able to offload the entire position where I wanted. And then when I woke up this morning, I could see the shares were trading flat, not looking like they were putting in a strong bottom. So I offloaded the rest at $36 a share. Did make a profit on every share, approximately around $4,000 US, which wasn't too bad for a little overnight swing trade. Certainly covered a nice celebratory dinner and drinks. My wife and I enjoyed by the lake last night. And just looking at the rest of the day, traded pretty flat, closed around 36. And here we are coming off a bit after hours as I speak, 33.46. So I thought I'd just share that with you guys. Thought you'd find it interesting. An overnight swing trade I took on DJT, how it played out what my theory and logic was but like I said it all came from my high conviction that Trump was going to win and just that divergence we had in the prediction betting market odds and how it pulled back my technical indicators were firing off we had a nice bullish divergence on my DSI previously looks like a zone where shares have been accumulated we came down there on low volume classic double bottom and I almost nailed the lows and I almost nailed the top as well however it wasn't perfect because if it kept trading up into the mid 60s that would have been 100% perfect but like I said just having a bit of fun in my swing trading account it's not normal a type of trade I do but this trade was just jumping at me off the chart and I couldn't resist it okay now over to something else I alluded to earlier in this video potential contrarian play I'm watching obviously cannabis got slammed today Florida held a vote in which surprisingly they didn't vote to legalize recreational marijuana even though Trump a resident now of Florida came out in support of it governor Ron DeSantis doesn't like it his main gripe being he doesn't want the smell of cannabis on the streets unfortunate to see Citadel billionaire Ken Griffin support it as well however so be it. I still think US federal legalization is going to happen, especially with Elon Musk in there looking to improve the government's finances, decrease spending, increase revenue. This is an easy win for them. Most Americans want cannabis legalized. They can get a lot of tax from it. Instead of spending money on fighting it, they can instead regulate and tax it. And so I think Trump still may do this. It may indeed take another year or two, and we may have not seen the low in these cannabis related securities. However, we may get a little bit of follow through over the coming days in which I may look to buy the dip on that as well. But of course, this is not an overnight swing trade. This is going to need some time to work out. And we were previously let down by the Biden administration, who specifically said in his campaign that he would legalize it, but he wasn't able to get it done. It's not all his fault either. Big farmers fighting it. It's a big threat to their pain management business. And obviously, there's still a lot of old school thinking people who don't really understand the science around it either. So of course, like all content in my videos, it's not financial advice. Please do your own research. I'm just sharing with you something I'm potentially looking at as just another trade in one of my portfolios. And just wrapping things up, getting a huge move today in growth stocks versus defensive stocks. In fact, breaking out multi-year highs here. Same with discretionary versus staples. Massive, almost 5% spread. Market really pricing and growth ahead of us and especially with small caps, which you could think of as mostly being American companies. And I was surprised actually to see those global mega cap techs hold up pretty well. But it was also really the financials just ripping up here today like crazy. The transports and of course Tesla was always going to catch a bid if Trump won, which is interesting because there's the threat of these EV regulatory credits being rolled back along with other potential headwinds. Like I said, Elon Musk may be able to hold sway in that and we may get surprised on this along with a few other things, cannabis and China being two of them. Otherwise, things are looking really good. I'm optimistic about the future, not only for America, but for financial markets. We just got some monster moves out there today and Americans and the markets have clearly spoken. And that's all for today, folks. Thanks very much for tuning in with Click Capital and congrats to Americans for holding a clean and decisive US presidential election. Now we can move past that, look to the future and hopefully this is of benefit to everybody. Thanks very much and I'll see you all again tomorrow. Cheers.